I am Lisa Yamagata Lynch, Associate Professor in the Educational Psychology and Counseling Department. IT 532, Online Learning Environments, is a class for IT master's degree students and also students who are interested in the graduate certificate for online teaching and learning. It is a regular 15-week semester course that is taught asynchronously and synchronously blended together with Blackboard and Blackboard Collaborate. Asynchronous online learning is what probably people typically expect as online learning where the instructor and students are communicating to each other at different times through an online discussion forum. So every week, um, just like a regular class, students have readings and activities and the asynchronous activities are always built towards the synchronous activities. So I primarily have targeted discussion questions during the asynchronous activity that is specifically about the readings for that week. And that gives me a good idea of where students are with their understanding of the readings. So then I can design the synchronous activity specifically to target any areas of weakness or if students already have mastered the content, then I can really focus more on um, skill developing kind of activities. In my class, synchronous learning is when students and myself all log into Blackboard, collaborate together at our regular class time. And it's really set up like a classroom where there's a video feed, audio feed, uh, the class roster is always in front of you. You can see who's in class, who's not, and there's a shared whiteboard space that I usually use as my lecture board. Um, it's like projecting your PowerPoint lecture in a regular classroom. During my live online classroom, which is usually slotted in a regular three-hour time span of a graduate level course, I always start with logistical check-in where students can ask me questions and I can make announcements regarding the class or tools we're using in future activities. And then there might be a mini lecture that I give and then usually we take a break and then there'll be one or two breakout activities where students go into what's called breakout rooms but it's like going into a private space and students work on a problem that I give to them. I try very hard that I give the rest of the hour and a half for my office hours with them and um, they just ask me questions of any kind and I also give a lot of um, team projects and I justify that later hour and a half for teams to work together because many of my students are working professionals and it, it can be difficult for them to find times to meet together. Having the group work in a live online session I think has been one of the more challenging aspect of teaching online synchronously. For me, a group of three or four really works well and they become more accountable to make their post and comment and then they really can't hide in the mass of the entire number of the class. So in my class, students already have worked together during the week asynchronously and then they come to breakout activities during the synchronous session in the same group. They already know what um, each of them think about the activities or the readings for that week. And I also learned that for the synchronous session rather than telling students you have 20 minutes to talk about topic A, you really have to give them a lot more detailed instruction on you have 20 minutes to talk about topic A and in that 20 minutes you need to accomplish one, two, three and at the end of the 20 minutes you have to be ready to present to the class what you talked about. I also learned recently that students waste a lot of time during um, the time when they're just trying to figure out okay who's going to do what. So I have decided to then give roles to students so that they go in with specific role, with details of what they have to do. They just go and talk about the topic, don't waste the 20 minutes, and then present on what they talked about. I think it's very important that they know that you're still available. You can come to any room at any time if they raise their hand. Or sometimes my student will come to the main room and ask, say, Dr. Lisa, I have a question, or we have a question. Can you come down? I think at UT, a great place to start for a brand new online instructor is the Summer Teaching Institute. It really helps you um, with expectations, any skills you need to develop. 
Another place if you can't go to the Summer Teaching Institute is the OIT online toolkit. Um, I think a lot of the concepts of what you need to do, what to expect for teaching online is all there. Another place would be that OIT has consultants ready for you too. Um, it's all going to be based on how much time you're willing to put in, but there are consultants who can work with you. And then once you start teaching online, inevitably there are going to be student issues with the technology itself. And I know that many people or instructors fear, oh my gosh, how much troubleshooting am I going to be doing? A lot of times I think the answer is you really don't have to, but you really need to remind your students over and over again how to reach OIT because ultimately as an instructor there's nothing you can do about it.